invite. Oh my God, these people already, hello. Yes, we worked it out. <laughs> hello. 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 <laughs> How are you? I'm good. A bit cool. excited because it's going to be my first uh, live uh, in English. <laughs> oh. I would know. You're perfect. I know your English. Your English is absolutely perfect. So don't worry about that. Um, okay. I hope, well, I hope we didn't get confused with time zones because I definitely got confused with time zones. <laughs> Maybe you're but diving too deep it. lately. <laughs> yeah, I think I've probably been diving too deep lately. Yeah. So I'm I'm in I'm in Cyprus. Where am I? Yeah, I'm in Cyprus at the Worlds, um, and you're in Kalamata. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Are you, so are you doing some training? You're doing some deep training? Yeah, I actually arrived here a few days. It's a second today and was a second session. Um, so I felt that it was not enough. Uh, uh, that I want to play a bit more with the monofin because it just traveled with me uh, through the whole world and I did just one dive and I feel it's not fair. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I came here to check the um, place and every and yeah. uh, the and sea is amazing. What do you think? Have you been to Kalamata before? No, no, it's the first time. Have so you been to Kalamata try, before? Uh, no, no. It's my first time, so uh, it's like a recovering training time. <laughs> yeah, good, 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 good. That's important. Right, look, I had loads of people send me some really cool, amazing questions, and I, I just want to crack into them. Um, it, it won't be so technical, it won't be so boring. Um, people just are really interested in you and the way you do things. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'll see what I can do with the connection. Guys, I'm switching off everything else and hopefully the connection will pick up. Every now and again, it looks crystal clear, but uh, we're doing our best. Um, hey, Arno's just joined. Hello, mate. <laughs> um, okay. okay, right. Well, like, <laughs> I've got a question from Carlos. It's a strange question. How do you EQ? Like, Carlos is an instructor. Carlos, you're an instructor trainer. You should know this. <laughs> <laughs> pinch and blow, right? If you, I think he wants to know you your ask, specific type. If you ask any deep free diver, they like most of them just say it's just working, <laughs> but it's not my case. It wasn't working for a long time. Uh, Charlotte, uh, so here also the you guys uh, also in Kalamata, and uh, we've been just uh, riding the bikes uh, ten minutes ago so they are watching us from the gym <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so how I, do i equalize uh, last year when i was uh, working in uh, free diving world center i uh, learned how to do constant and uh, yeah in cash last year i was doing it but this year i changed to um, uh, this uh, intermittent intermittent In, constant intermittent. Uh, Let, let's uh, let's call it a sequential friends though according to uh, Andrea Andrea Zucari yeah yes yeah, so now it's uh, it is this uh, I can do some constant pressure in the beginning when I just charge the mouse feel and then I switch to this one but uh, I tried it before but I was reverse packing all the time and it was not uh, safe. <laughs> so I really made an effort to switch to the constant and it worked yeah. last do, year. Do you, do you not find it difficult to maintain the constant pressure for a really long time? Um, once you get it, it's not, but it takes time and you really need much more focus 
uh, to find the balance between keeping this constant pressure and relaxation, so not to over press it. Uh, um, yeah, and um, and when I learned this one, when I switched back to the sequential one, it feels so much better. So I I can. Enjoy Uh, equalization. So uh, I'm actually recommending to try both to have more tools so you can switch from one to another. And uh, yeah. Cool. Excellent. Um, there's, there's, <laughs> more, there's a lot. There's a lot more questions about you, your diving um, coming through. They're really interesting. Because um, in the last three years, you've had a really nice progression. Um, of, of depth, especially in, in the last couple of years, like you really, you really seem to have fixed something. Something was fixed. <laughs> Not something, that, that means something was broken, something, but something got was It's really right. easy. I, I can say I just spend more time in the sea because before it was not possible. I was a pool free diver and my deep diving was really occasional. Maximum I spent. Uh, in the depths was well, like one month and it was only once and usually it's, it was just a week or 10 days and I had a long story with the sinuses, blocked sinuses so I couldn't even train equalization to, like to start learning it so it was very yeah. disappointing path <laughs> but yeah and um, actually I progressed just because I stuck in Egypt because of the war last year yeah. And this is what happened. Yeah. Did you did you have to have any surgery on your sinuses? Surgery? No, no. Uh, it was not that bad, but they uh, okay. were blocked for some time. Yeah. But I tried yeah. different stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, can't I had to something. have. Um, <laughs> I had to have two surgeries on my sinuses here and here, and it was uh, it was a very difficult time. I had I had. Um, couple of years away from I couldn't dive I couldn't go deeper than five or ten some days so yeah I know what that's like yeah it sucks <laughs> <laughs> but we made it through we made it through yeah yeah good <laughs> yeah it, it will give some inspiration and hope for those who uh, <laughs> at that point now <laughs> but uh, yeah. you can um, yeah I think it's better to try to avoid the new surgeries and um, yeah I, yeah. I went through alternative medicine and it worked. Alternative? That's interesting. What? So, yeah. Like Chinese medicine? Or? No, it was actually like I tried the traditional thing. I went to the doctor. They gave me some prescriptions. I tried to, to follow it before uh, my trip uh, to the sea and during, but it didn't work actually. And then once we arrived to Dahab and my friend recommended me Ayurvedic massage, like the whole body uh, with uh, some herbs and everything. It was really relaxing thing, but seems like some blocks in the body were like released. And uh, uh, next, like the, uh, the night after something came out and I had like, I finally understood how to breathe like freely <laughs> and the equalization was amazing next day so oh. like this chronic thing uh went out and uh, yeah i have some congestions from time to time but they are not that bad and i can fix them easily yeah that's amazing. so it that's, can be connected really nice. that, with that some a lot of people other uh, <laughs> yeah i think it was also like psychosomatic thing um yes yeah, so, because like there were many stress obviously in my body and uh, it can be connected so you can try to go with like face uh, massage so there are it depends on the problem of course uh, um, but in my case it worked and i'm really happy that i didn't go to the surgery <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's that's much better yeah surgery is always <laughs> a last resort um all right let's ask something not so technical um i mean it's a general question that really gets asked a lot but it's about um food and and diet anything is there anything special 
This is from Raybot90. Is there anything special that you eat or don't eat that helps you? Um, I had some story with nutrition, like I was uh, vegetarian and even vegan. Uh, some period, it was some period when I was doing synchronized swimming and when I started to do free diving. But uh, I think there are too many things that changed since I had this transition from very intense professional sports to like less intense balance and uh, it was hard to uh, have a balanced diet uh, being vegetarian and vegan so I tried meat and I felt amazing <laughs> so since then I I don't follow some strict um, strict diet and I decided to focus on my feelings so it's like let's call it intuitive eating sometimes i, I want like uh, some uh, cheat meal yeah sometimes i want some cheat meal and i feel good after it and i'm don't i don't blame myself and sometimes i uh, i feel like i want something really healthy something really green and clean and uh, usually when i'm going deeper uh, like more into hypoxic trainings in the pool so i feel this connection more so i want something lighter and uh, yeah, I mm, reduce meat, uh, but it comes, <laughs> yeah, and ice cream. <laughs> we had a lot of ice cream today, but I'm not the deep yet, Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, so it's time for cheat meal now. I'm eating everything, but um, yeah, um, I try to uh, to feel what my body needs right now, uh, but. But um, also I'm thinking about uh, taking a nutritionist um, to check what is better for my body. Um, yeah, because I never did that before. It's interesting. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant because like, I've tried to follow sh very strict diets before. And uh, like, I think, honestly, I get to a point where I think life's too short. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you, you need to have a cheat meal. You need to have some fun. <laughs> yeah. So have these these strict diets where you're you're weighing weighing the grams of protein and and stuff like this, it's just like no way, man. I can't do stuff like that. What what's your favorite cheat meal? Um, it's some sweets, some sweets. Sweet. Stuff. I'm sweet yeah. 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 Chocolate. I'm, I'm chocolate. Yeah. I can't. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> chocolate is part of everyone's diet. Yeah, but chocolate actually, should be part of everyone's diet. Yeah, but the thing is, and um, I started to feel it and experience this, and uh, I experience this every season, that the deeper I go, the less shit food I want. Like, I want really uh, some uh, good protein, some... That's true, uh, yeah. Some, some really quality and fresh, and uh, mm. yeah, so you really go for the best yeah, for your that's... body. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I can relate to that because the more the more I'm into a deep freediving uh, time, if, if I'm training a lot, yeah, I, I don't crave the the, the bad foods um, uh, as much as I do when I'm off. If I'm just working all the time, um, <laughs> I just I just I just want to eat burgers and chocolate. But if I'm deep training, I don't know. I guess, I you need guess some rewards. Huh? Yeah. You need some rewards when you're yeah. training a lot. Yeah, it's a, re you it's a, a reward. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need something back. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I'm really interested in your background, the, the synchronized swimming. I mean, I, I presume everyone knows your background, but what I'm interested in is how how the two sports compare to each other. Because in synchro, you have a whole swim squad with you. You're you're traveling with them. You're training with them. I, mean, I don't know how many people were in your team, um, but in freediving, it's only you. Like, it, how do you compare the two? Is is do you do you like being with a team or do you prefer being on your own? Uh, which which do you prefer? I like both. Uh, I like both, but uh, in secret, I was. Um, lacking the freedom in my life because everything was planned 
and the goals were set by the coaches. So like, um, where to start? I never dreamed about being a champion and uh, living a, a professional athlete life. I was, uh, yeah, I really uh, was seeing myself studying, finishing university and going to some like normal job. Yeah, so making a career, like a normal career. And uh, so quite swimming, I, th I thought that I will finish after school, like together, and then focus on studying. But it happened a bit in a different way. And uh, yeah, I moved uh, to another city when I was 14, to Kiev. And then I became a part of national team. So it became my occupation. It took all my time from seven in the morning till four, five, or six, even seven o'clock in the evening. Um, yeah, with some breaks, but they were very small. So, like the whole day, you are training and working, and it's like it's combined also with uh, a lot of stress, yeah. <laughs> of course. And yeah. um, uh, yeah, so it was very intense time. Like 17 years I've been there and 10 of them I was in the national team representing Ukraine uh, in the junior European and world champion then senior team and then we made it to Olympics. Um, yeah, so I had quite, quite a sport life before. So when I yeah. discovered free diving, I really felt like I like the process. Uh, uh, because my first experience was uh, doing static in the pool. Uh, it was not a course, just trying. And I felt so amazing. I didn't hear my inner monologue for the first time in my life. And I went out from the pool and I heard the birds, the voices. Uh, inside and uh, talking this uh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it, it was just amazing. And... Uh, like in at any age so um i decided that when i retire i i will definitely give it a try so this is what happened and um, yeah i started right from the competition um yeah and set national record there and then i thought oh it will be easy yeah. so i really had a good physical base and uh i, I to push myself because uh, um, because I was also doing some like, uh, in my free time, uh, like apart from synchronized swimming. So I was physically yeah. uh, uh, strong, and also I already started this mental thing. I was uh, um, I knew what is pranayama. I, I did Kundalini yoga for some long time. I already tried uh, some rebirthing. Uh, maybe you know this technique, uh, like holotropic breathing. So I really experimented a lot on my free time because um, I really was seeking for something else, something different, yeah. some new yeah, ways to, uh, and now to deal do, with the stress. Do, do mental practices Sorry, so the mental practices if... like yoga and pranayama still make a part of your training? Oh, I'm sorry about this connection, guys. I don't even know if anyone can hear me now. Um... And do you guys hear me or Gary? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We are back. So <laughs> let me finish with the story and then I go to the pranayamas. <laughs> so yeah, I had this really, I had this really good start. It was really promising, but then I thought that, oh, okay, I will come to the competition and just do the national record every time. But it didn't happen like that. I, uh, I got sambas, blackouts in the pool. Ah. Um, it was really, uh, interesting process like I, I was really pushing and i was really ready uh mentally like to go there to go f through the discomfort and everything but my body started to lose this physical condition i had before 
and I haven't discovered how to maintain it and how to gain it uh, in freediving. I, I couldn't do synchronized swimming, obviously, uh, because I didn't want to. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, I simply didn't have knowledge. I had a coach uh, in um, Ukraine. He was working uh, with Natalia Zharkova in her very beginning. And uh, we were working on static maybe. And we... then I stuck for a long time, for a few years. And um, yeah. I finally started to get back into the shape, try different stuff, try different advisors and coaches and um and then it just clicked uh like on that year when the war started last year i don't know how but i didn't have training that season but i like i was just working in charm doing safety and doing deep dives i had just uh, a few trainings in the pool and then i came to one world championship i did all the PBs and then I came to another and did all the PBs and even won some medals. I couldn't even imagine this doing uh, my normal training, like usual training, uh, the full one. And it was uh, really miracle. I think just also something mental unlocked that year. And uh, yeah, and about the pranayamas and mental preparation, it's becoming more simple every year. Like I don't need that much uh um now like i i did a, a lot when i was searching for my tool i found my meditation i'm doing it and uh yeah i made in some stretching i can add some yoga uh, but um free diving became more athletic now more uh, sporty and uh, i found some spiritual thing in this approach <laughs> so yeah that's really cool yeah I, I, I do what I find is really amazing is like you know uh, we won't won't go into uh, we're going to this as much as you're comfortable but you know there's there's stuff going on in your country and and how your performance went up while all that was going on is just is just an incredible thing how you found the mental space to um, um, to drive yourself forward I, I guess it, yeah, it's just remarkable, and it's really, it's really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I uh, think it was the trigger. It was the trigger, and uh, trigger, yeah. uh, there was some shift in my mindset uh, on the first week. Actually, the main progression was made on the first week when the war started. I was just crazy. I didn't control myself. Uh, there were a lot of mixed feelings, like a lot of anger, yeah. hate, and um, Blue Hole was the only place where I couldn't read the news. So um, yeah. I was going there almost every day and I progressed like uh, I did 10 meters to my PB in one week, just because I, uh, oh. I couldn't stop and I was just, okay. What can happen? Like, um, yeah, I was out of fear. Yeah. Uh, it was not perfect. There was no perfect dives. Of course, it was not perfect relaxation. It was some something inside, and I got my first trachea squeeze, and the only one actually. And I and then I thought, okay, stop. We we need to calm down to understand what we gonna to do with our lives, and uh, yeah. It, I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Well, look, uh, th th really appreciate talking about that. Thank you so much. Um, um, okay. Look, there's some other questions outside of EQ and stuff. Um, this is quite <laughs> a funny one, but it, it's like if you could describe your worst sports experience and um, then what you learned from it, like how you, how you came out of that. So, the worst sport experience is my skiing or ice skating or snowboarding. I'm totally not made for outdoor, like uh, everything about the water related. 
<laughs> I'm, um, yeah, I'm falling down very nicely in the artistic way. <laughs> well, but, snow, uh, snow is still water. It's just yeah, but, a bit harder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, I just need to dedicate maybe more time to that. But um, yes. what what I learned is that. Um, yeah, you need to do your thing. <laughs> you need to yeah. focus on your strength. Um, yeah, if you want to learn something else, you need to be really safe and not to um, expect a lot from yourself and be yeah. really easy on yourself if something not going good. <laughs> yeah. Be yeah. safe. Yeah, that's that's a very difficult thing for us to manage, isn't it? Um, you put you put an expectation on yourself, and when it doesn't go right, um, and sometimes it's not your fault. I had this in the summer. Um, I was I wanted to dive in the competition in August in Sharm El Sheikh, but then I had very difficult time finding time for training, um, and then I had to go back to the UK. Uh, I went from Egypt to the UK, then back in forty eight hours. And then I thought it would be a good idea to try a, a, a very deep bifins dive. And um, yeah, I learned a very strong lesson. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I had my first Yeah, it's very quickly. It, oh my God. It's very quickly in free diving. Like if you are pushing too much, yeah. um, you get, give um, response immediate. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's especially, if you especially, yeah if you es especially if you are deep. Especially if you are deep. Especially if you're deep. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Um, yeah, so like uh, someone's asking, like, what do you do? Uh, I saw someone ask on the, on the Instagram thread, what, what are you doing like outside of free diving to stay fit and healthy in the off season? Uh, I don't remember off season. I'm doing pool free diving. <laughs> like last <laughs> yes, year. Yes, you're in the pool. <laughs> uh, yeah, last year I finished. Like because last year I just uh, it was my first season I've been a deep free diver. Um, yeah, before I was doing the pool all the time, so mm. um, I supposed to have off season. Like, uh, but I arrived back home, and it was really intense. Like, uh, apart from everything's happening, I also had uh, some my own feelings. Everything was so bright, so nice in cash. Uh, it was like in a dream and then you wake up from the dream and come back to reality to your life uh, but it's not your life anymore like it's the life you used to live before but it yeah. was the first time i was absent i was far from home uh, like for half of the year and it was not my choice but i adapted to another reality and i needed to come back so i had to adapt again and um yeah, we started uh, uh, to train with Samo. Uh, he wrote me the base training and everything. Like we at the gym because we haven't, I, I didn't do any gym. I did some yoga, like some light stuff. So um, I went to the gym and I'm really a beginner there. Um, so it was very intense. And oh, we are back to professional sports. Do I really need this? <laughs> Because it, yeah. I finally experienced this feeling that I really need time to recover. I really need to um, be strict with what I'm eating, with how I'm sleeping, which is actually, which was not really possible because there were air raids every time during the night. So like I had to recover, but I couldn't. So I was coming back to uh, training to the pool or to the gym and I wasn't fully recovered and it was wow. a bad experience again. So it, it was really the hardest season I had. Um, but yeah, I'm doing if you ask me what I'm doing. So now I decided to go a bit easier. Uh, I want to, because this season was like hard. We were doing a lot of CNF. <laughs> and uh, I, I really like and I enjoy it, but um, I, I missed some uh, dives for joy, for pleasure, 
just go in a bit deeper, but not too much, not that challenging, um, yeah. playing with equalization. It, it's actually just started to work um, in, in raw time because before, like my depth adaptation was just one month before the Bahamas. And- uh, One month, started, really? Yeah, I, I was turning at 80 all the times, uh, like before Vertigo Blue started, my max was 80. It was enough to go to CNF. But for other disciplines, uh, it was a bit disappointing. Like, uh, <laughs> I forgot how to equalize. <laughs> but then it started to work. And in Rotan, um, I really, maybe this um, tension, it released. And actually, I re arrived to this World Championship and I didn't felt like I want to compete at all. I was exhausted <laughs> and tired uh, but i had to show some results because it's more official um for my federation like they don't care about aida but yeah. simas um yeah they care and they had to show some results so okay <laughs> i started this process let's do something and it started to work and uh, yeah i got back this competitive feeling and i really enjoyed uh, the competition so i I wasn't pushing, but I was really doing what I'm ready for. And um, this is how it should be. Because before, uh, like last year and the previous years, I was pushing. And uh, we can really see this on my dives. And uh, when yeah. they close up the equalization, <laughs> the turns and everything, uh, I did all the mistakes. Uh, I can show to my students how not to do. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> yeah, and now it's good, yeah, it's good had, to make mistakes. You show them how not to do things. And now, <laughs> now I had uh, those amazing dives this year, and I really understand that um, pushing is not the way it should come naturally, and you really need to work on that mental part. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, I can't believe you. I can't believe that uh, you had a one-month depth adaptation before the Bahamas. That's really, that's even more incredible. Uh, but that shows. I, I think I think I, it shows I, your strong background in pool. Um, I see that you have you have probably the best the best no fins technique that there is, um, and it shows. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I actually, was uh, preparing for the World Championship in Kuwait. It was my goal, and that's why I was doing pool. The and so the plan was to do the pool until the May, go there uh, to Kuwait and then go uh, for the depths. But um, then Aida and Simas allowed uh, Russian athletes to compete under neutral flag. Yeah. And the response from our government was to boycott those competitions. So we skipped the world championship in Kuwait and uh, Aida so, um, yeah, I went straight to depth in the beginning of uh, summer. Uh, I was in uh, Eilat and I'm really thankful to Sagi and Frida yeah. Eilat. They made, they made this uh, training camp uh, amazing and perfect. I really, foc I could focus on the training, the, like without those extra emotions. Like in the beginning, it was too much and it was very intense because there were many things happening in Ukraine and I really could feel it in my first dives. Like, for example, there was a situation the we went with a boat for the first time and there was a big boat next to us and they had some echoes, uh, like some sound underwater. Uh, I don't know how to call it, like sonar. And, oh, uh, so not, yeah. uh, and it was the same time when um, the Russians blew the dam when uh, like the, the whole south of Ukraine was underwater and it was very intense. And um, I hear that sound and I literally felt I, like these pictures appeared in my mind that there are some mines there or there is some bomb or there is like, yeah. So it took me like reality that I'm not there and uh, I can focus on my training. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, not just that adaptation, but going back to the normal life because I really, like with the depth, I realized how much stress I was carrying all this year. 
um, yeah, and now when I come back to the depths after home, I also feel this that it's so much more yeah. than uh, from real from the normal reality. And we we just Ukrainians we adapt to this, and we seem like oh we getting like we living with this, but it's affecting us on our subconscious and it's in our body. Of course yeah yeah so it's yeah and it's i think big, that's that's an incredible thing about deep. our sport is yeah. is you can't yeah. hide from any of that yeah so in normal life i i wouldn't uh i wouldn't feel it it would just yeah. come up with some problems with the health at some point and uh and here i just think i just cannot go deeper if there is some extra stress uh, so I need to deal with this and only then go deeper. So yeah, that's a really, that's yeah. a really interesting point. Um, I think that's unique about our sport is, is we, maybe like you said, if it wasn't for the sport, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice that there were these problems and, and maybe you wouldn't notice for 10 years and then it would come, it would show itself some way, it always shows itself. It would show itself in some yeah. kind of a health problem, a chronic health problem or something. Whereas um, with, with, with the sport that we do, it's so unique that we're constantly monitoring our mental health and our physical health. So we see these things as they come up and that's, yeah, that's really interesting that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. This, is, this is fantastic. I'm learning so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, if I compare myself to the Kate, uh, like, 2021 edition when I had my first depth uh, world championship in cash and now it's two completely different persons and these two years were really uh, transformed me a lot yeah and then my lifestyle changed of course um, yeah. but um, yeah there it, it's changing I hope for good like apart from the things happening in Ukraine, uh, but yeah, we're also working on the victory and uh, yeah, but it's a marathon and we need to uh, find a way to recharge, to find an be within ourselves because nobody is interested more than us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, brilliant. Uh, well, let, well, do you want to go back to like a, a little technical EQ thing and then a bit more lifestyle stuff? Oh. Um, uh, it's so, a kind of exam for me, so I'm interested. <laughs> if I, if I have <laughs> yeah, I know you love it. So, uh, Ilari is asking, um, what, which type of EQ did you use when you first started? Were you, were you friends all about salva, hands-free? What was your instinctive? Sure, I wasn't hands free. It was real struggle. <laughs> and you hands free now? Hands no, no, I, I never. I, I, no, I cannot no, no. do this. Maybe I, I will uh, take a course from someone, Roberto Butera or <laughs> Federico yeah. Mana, uh, because I, I really find it useful and also for like instructor uh, work and for underwater modeling. I, I'd like to learn that skill, but I'm not there yet. So I'm Franzel. I was Franzo. I didn't do Valsalva, I think. Maybe in the beginning when I didn't know how to figure out what's happening because I was lacking of knowledge, what to do, where to do. And obviously I was congested all the time, but somehow I pushed myself to 10 meters and to 17 meters. And it was my first experience was in the quarry, dark and cold. And I had a really nice uh, diving <laughs> wetsuit. I couldn't do the breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot of stress and then like I'm still wondering why I'm still doing free diving after that experience. <laughs> uh, yeah. In Odessa in the Black Sea, which is not really pleasant experience too. It was cold, low visibility and a lot of stress. But then I decided that I'm deep enough to go to the competition. <laughs> And a friend of mine, uh, Denis Rilov, invited me to join him uh, for uh, to go into the Caribbean Bonaire uh, to uh, join the Deep Sea Challenge. And I said, okay, 
I'm I'm a deep diver now. I'm 17 meters deep. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and I went to this to this place, and finally I realized how beautiful freediving can be when you don't struggle with the cold, when the visibility is so beautiful, when yeah. you can relax, when you can wear some uh, thin wetsuit. And my equalization started to work and I went from the 17 meters to 41 just during the comp. Wow. It was so easy. And uh, of course, everybody was giving me some tips, some deep free divers. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. But then I stuck at that point uh, for like a few years. It was a, like 40, 50 meter free diver. And uh, yeah, yeah. I just started to go deeper recently brilliant um okay, <laughs> okay. um through through from dahab i don't know if you know through but uh through's based in dahab and um, this is very interesting because there's a lot of people that really want to focus on on no fins um and no fins is definitely the most challenging to equalize with so would you have any advice for people struggling with no fins eq yeah, you just have to get used to contractions and that's all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I was <it> <laughs> used to, I, I mean, I, I'm experiencing a lot of contractions uh, in the pool and sometimes, and I also was doing static a lot uh, before, now I'm doing a bit less, but before and uh, like I did seven minutes uh, static on the competition and five of them was with contractions. So oh, wow. I'm, I'm really, yeah, like it was not the most comfortable dive, but I really just live with them. And um, yeah, when I get them in the depths, I need some time to adapt uh, rhythm of contractions, but, and to relax. Uh, so it's not affecting my lungs and uh, not giving some tension. But they are just there, <laughs> and um, yeah, they're just there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can yeah, try just to there. work with the relaxation. You can uh, you can work with your technique, and uh, yeah, maybe I will find a way to uh, make them less intense. But I actually don't really care. Uh, in depth, they are not that discomfort as in the pool, so um, yeah. it's just some extra movement. So you, you don't you don't find uh, swallowing the air is a huge problem on, on a no fins dive. You need to desynchronize this movement. It's like uh, you start working on equalization and you um, learn how to move your tongue, how to move your soft palate, uh, because usually it's a very complex thing and you try to uh, divide it into different um, parts and then to uh, recollect it. So it's the same with this. Uh, um, so you need to find uh, your own way to synchronize this. So you work um yeah <laughs> work on different parts and then you collect yeah. them yeah so what we did yeah, this, uh, is, this is important in general in general of course it's uh, co2 tolerance can help you um, with the contraction so they will start a bit later but also you will be more familiar with them yeah and yeah. Um, what what it would what would the CO two tolerance training look like for for you? Would it be swimming pool based or or, or tape, uh, breath hold table based? It's everything. It's uh, dry static. Uh, it's pool static. It's uh, pool dynamic. It's um, some dives um, with a short uh, recovery in the sea. Um, yeah, so the tolerance, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, all the uncomfortable things in the pool, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, all the uncomfortable go to, into the discomfort, find the, the comfort in this, and it will click. So, find the 
comfort in the discomfort. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, the main thing about the pool uh, training and pool um, free diving. Because it's uh, all about discomfort. Mm. It's not that pleasant as, um, as... But once you find this comfort in the discomfort and go through this, uh, really, like in the beginning of pool training, getting longer, I really like this feeling of control in this hypoxic state, uh, like from the deeper... Uh, like feeling of yourself because in depth, uh, I don't really feel that hypoxia much and it can, uh, I don't know, but uh, I think it happens a bit without yeah. those signs yeah. as in the pool. So do you, uh, do you struggle with, um, uh, do you struggle with narcosis at depth? Cause it's something I'm really struggling with at the moment. No, uh, I maybe, no. but, um, uh, I don't know, I'm really, I feel that I'm really going deeper into my conscious and maybe into some subconscious. So I'm trying to control myself from the really core of my uh, brain, I don't know, thoughts. Uh, so it's not like, yeah. And um, I'm, I had something like that when I just started to go deeper. Uh, maybe one dive in the blue hole I had, it was around 70. Uh, and I was a bit scared, but then uh, I was familiar with this feeling and I don't know, maybe it's narcosis, maybe not. Uh, but I don't have any hallucinations or something. Yeah. Let's see. Maybe it's waiting for me a bit deeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those yeah. <laughs> Dolphins. <laughs> awesome. So, so like, how long? Uh, how long are you in Kalamata for? Uh, for your for your training. So I, I want to train and take part. Uh, maybe trade uh, take part in this competition. See us here until fifteen of, of oh. October. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I'm actually I have really intense schedule now. I don't know. If like many people want to learn freediving in Ukraine. So I came back home and I already had three courses in three weeks. And uh, I had also to move from one city to another, the same after. So my uh, off season is teaching season. <laughs> but then I, I want really to focus on my own training and to reduce teaching um, because it's hard to combine. Yeah. At this and level, are like you before, still, are you still running your swimwear? Your swimwear brand. I know yeah, you have a really beautiful two, brand. Your swimwear. Yeah, and this is too. It needs some reformation. We're working on the new website. Manage international shipping. Many people reckon us, but but it's uh, it's really expensive to send from Ukraine, and sometimes it costs. Yeah. So we need to find a solution. Maybe someone uh, seen us and have some ideas how to solve it because I really, I really want to go internationally, and uh, we have friends yeah. who want to yeah, help well. us. But uh, yeah, so yeah, it's also the part I need to focus on. Uh, it needs my time, and when I'm, I in the competition mode, I cannot work. Like my brain uh, cannot produce any ideas, <laughs> any creative things, and even solve uh, yeah, tasks. It's uh, focused only on recovery. And uh, um, yeah, so to create this life that, yeah, some parts of the year I'm working hard and then I can just focus on my on training fully completely yeah. and yeah. yeah it's a challenge and i really I, I like it <laughs> yeah i <I'm> like <laughs> yeah i know what you mean you uh, so when i'm in a deep training period it's really hard to focus on anything else and you become a bit hyper focused which is why i can only do that for a short amount of time i can only yeah. do that for two, three weeks maximum, and then I need a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you have any like teaching workshops uh, coming up? Or are you just focused on the competition? Um, 
No. Course in deep spot, but it's, uh, it's for Ukrainians. Um, like, uh, and I will have a few courses. I think uh, the pool courses in Ukraine, and we're also thinking about some CNF uh, workshop uh, with Stefan. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if they announce it or not. That would be incredible. But we, we thought about this and he contacted we need to discuss it but i i would really like uh, to do this i i'm not really uh, um confident do it the uh, by my own uh, but i would like to to share it with with stefan and he's really good in cnf and i really like his technique yeah. i learned a lot from him uh, and it was a great pleasure to die with him and alex linas yeah and we'll to bridge uh, like those snow things guys in the bahamas um yeah. so i was learning just from watching them uh so yeah we'll make something nice well and, look uh, you should come to that hub do a workshop <laughs> with stefan and i'm going to be your first customer because i will i will join that workshop okay stefan right uh one one place after harry yes yeah, <laughs> stefan <laughs> put gary down for one place <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, look, we've been talking for ages, um, um, and I think I've gone through most of the, most of the questions that we were sent. Um, I think it's maybe a natural time to sort of wrap things up. Um, I've learned loads talking to you. Um, it's really cool. I don't know when we're going to see each other again. Maybe we see each other in Dahab in the winter, um, or yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where. But um, yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah, thank I'm, you. I'm still thank you so much for joining. Figuring out my plan. So, yeah, but I think uh, at some point I will come to the hub because uh, I want to see so many people there and it's yeah. like one of my homes. <laughs> well, um, yeah. If you can be there by next week, it's Gus's 40th birthday, so uh, let's get to the party. <laughs> 40s, oh my God. Yeah, it's so 40. young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, excellent. Um, next week I've got uh, on Shante. Yeah, he's joining me. Uh, not next week, in two yeah. weeks' time, on Shante Gallardo is going to join me for a talk. I think she might be in yeah, Hawaii, be nice. but um, I saw her today. She's here. Um, she had a. Did you see her diet yeah, today? Yeah, she's the she's the winner. Yeah, yeah she, congrats. She did the roll. I saw the roll on the dive. I I saw that, and I I I know that because I did the, the same, but on the different <laughs> on the different <laughs> depth. <laughs> And I was starting my uh, different, but I, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really happy. But we definitely like to avoid that. But uh, it happened and I'm really happy for her. She had a really strong season and uh, it's really nice to finish it with a victory. Yeah. And actually, I, I wanted to wish you a good dive tomorrow. Yeah, it's the last day. Yeah, and thanks. it's your discipline, your yeah. favorite one, right? Yeah, but you know, I haven't, I haven't had the monofin on much this year, so I'm just, I'm just having a dive for pleasure, um, and that's all I want. I want a happy dive, um, and I just want to enjoy it. Yeah, because yeah. there's been two for the last two days. There's been very strong current, so yeah, you yeah. Know, we saw. Uh, if I have to early turn, that's life. Yeah. Just yeah. enjoy. Yeah, it, it's the yeah. best uh, result you will uh, have anyway. Yeah, yeah, no matter who you turn early or you have a white card, you anyway, yeah, so cool. enjoy it. So, all right, look, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you all for right. I'll invitation. See you next time. I'll see you soon. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> <Ta -ta. laughs> I'm not Asian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I need to press to end it. Okay, right. Three, two, one, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>